Hi everyone, Detective Chung here, and I'm here to share my discoveries. But today, I'm going to start off by giving myself an honorary PhD. No, not a master's, not a bachelor's, but an honorary PhD in epilepsy research from the University of Simply Unique. <laughs> because for the past five years, at least now, I've been doing a lot of studying, and even a friend of mine has called me a little scientist. <laughs> now, if you visited my Seize the Day page, links below in the description, then you already know that I've done a ton of research, and I'm always very organized with my findings. And as an epilepsy fighter, I also feel like a detective, a person whose job is to investigate and solve crimes. And you already know what that crime is that I'm fighting. <laughs> so in the beginning, I started by writing my findings in a notebook. But then I started to think, what if I'm not near my notebook? What if I'm out and I want to share my information? I need easy access to all my findings. So that's why I started my Seize the Day page and I began saving all my resources, all my links to my Pinterest account at the Chung Lao Shur. I've done a ton of reading and I'm very happy that many people have told me that they love my page, they say it's easy to read, and they love my details of my past remedies. It's given them good tips and ideas. And, oh, they love that I share my resources. They share the sources. I share those sources because I want people to know that I didn't randomly just write without any proof of my knowledge. So it's very easy access for people so you can see the sources. And that's why today, Miss Chung, or Dr. Chung, has her own honorary PhD. <laughs> in epilepsy research from my university of Simply Unique. I've done several experiments and trials, tons of analysis of my activities, synthesizing my body's reactions to remedies, many creations, you name it. Because sometimes a seizure trigger, sometimes a seizure doesn't have a trigger, and it happens just because it just wants to. A neurologist once told me that. He, to he told me, the brain basically does sometimes whatever it feels like. Now, if a neurologist tells you that, it doesn't really give you much hope. But I also don't want false hope. And it kind of goes... That Makes sense why the U.S. statistic is that one out of every three people battling epilepsy have uncontrollable seizures. One out of every three. And that's even more reason why I don't give myself false hope. I'm realistic, living my best life, and my goal is to lessen the severity and the quantity of my seizures. I have temporal lobe epilepsy, and it was just caused by one fall when I was little, triggered by one fall, <laughs> and but no seizures until adulthood, and that was triggered by constant lack of sleep. So get your sleep, seven to nine hours. Now, we all know that there are tons of seizure triggers. Absolutely anything. Yes, scary. <laughs> but there are some common triggers for a lot of people, such as fatigue, bright flashing lights, alcohol, drugs, caffeine, nicotine, anxiety, fevers, hormones, and the list just keeps going on. And I, I personally, I want to stop my preventable seizures. 
And I think I've done a pretty good job at it thus far. And since doctors, they can't be with their patients 24-7, we, epilepsy fighters, we have to be our own detectives and researchers. And as detectives, Team Epilepsy, it's very important to keep track of events before seizures. You may learn some of your personal triggers, you may find some patterns. Try to keep a seizure diary. You can use a daily planner. Um, you can also make sure that you write everything that happened that day, not just what you did, but also what you ate, your moods, smells. What did you smell? Because there are some scents that cause some people's seizures. And females, please take note what stage of your cycle that the seizure occurred. Common triggers are before and during menstruation and also during ovulation, which is about two weeks after the beginning of menstruation. I specifically explain more about this in detail on my site, detail number eight. So females, please check it out. And when you're trying to analyze seizure triggers, remember that some triggers can have a delayed reaction, meaning that they the trigger could have occurred more than 10 minutes before the seizure. That is why it's very important to keep track of activities throughout the day of that seizure. But yes, of course, it's nearly impossible for someone with daily seizures throughout the entire day. But for all of you who can, please try to keep a seizure diary. You may find some patterns. It definitely has helped me. Now I know that I'm not the only person out there with their own honorary PhD in epilepsy research. Because online, I've seen so many people share their findings. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you. You've all inspired me. And to all of us with chronic conditions, please give yourself a hug, a kiss, and everyone on your support team who has helped you. Give them all a hug, kiss, pat on the back, everything. Uplift yourself for all that you've done, all that you've researched, all that you've fo all that you found out. Even during times of struggles, please uplift yourself. And most of all, remember that never overexert yourself or stress yourself out for the preventable triggers. Think of it this way. Hmm. Why should I get so angry about this? Why should I exhaust myself on purpose? I can prevent this. You don't want to cause, purposely cause a seizure from exhaustion, from a high increase from a high pulse. We don't want to cause a seizure. Remember seizure fighters, our brains are already overactive when we're calm and we're doing absolutely nothing. So don't add preventable stress. All of my viewers have a lovely stress-free week. And I, Dr. Chung, <laughs> can't wait for next week, episode eight, a finale of Growth.